Any way do you think that you would support a pipeline if they could show you that it was safe, that uh, leaks are one in a million? Would there be anything that could convince you that this Enbridge proposal, for example, should go ahead? Absolutely not. I mean, this is an archaic industry that needs to be uh, put to rest like the dinosaurs, okay? We have the technology today to transition off of fossil fuels. It's not going to happen overnight, but these proposed pipelines are carbon ticking time bombs to the biggest carbon bomb on the planet, known as, of course, as Canada's controversial tar sands, and they absolutely need to be left in the ground if we're going to have any hope of mitigating the impending uh, climate crisis that we're now currently facing. And the reality of it is this government has made it very clear that they don't care about democracy, they don't care about the rights of Canadians, that at this point all paths lead to the Prime Minister's office. And so Canadians, First Nations alike, and all of our allies need to be hitting the streets, not just in Victoria, but in every major urban centre across this country and holding this government accountable. This government has shown that it has no concern for environmental regulations or laws for that matter. All roads lead to the Prime Minister's office. And so we've got to take it to the street. That's what we're doing. Perfect. Oh, look at this. It's going down. Talk about anything you want to talk about. Why are you here today? Why am I here today? I'm here for all of these things. We're here at the legislature, and yet the NDP are opposed to this, and the provincial government sounds very cautious. So, who, who, who's your message in here? Uh, my message is aimed at the BC government. Um, I'm frightened that the idea that they think that, oh, BC just needs more trees out of this, rather than looking at the idea that developing the car sand is outrageous. Um, I don't think it's just about royalties or BC getting a cut of the pie. I think it's about looking at the pie and understanding what it's tasteful. something goes wrong, you can't buy that back. You can't buy back your coastline. Once it's gone, it's gone.
Harper, you know, when they're doing the sales bonanza of all of Canada's natural resources, where he's promoting the human rights of First Nations, promoting the rights of all Canadians, and really gutting 30 years or so of environmental regulations with Bill C-38 and promising more with this new bill that they're putting on the table. So we are coming here to galvanize this movement for uh, a clean economy, you know, and, and for democracy. Then we've we've thought we've lost a lot of sovereignty. We've lost a lot of democracy. And given that this is, I see the two things as being connected. Uh, the Canada-China Investment Treaty has to be stopped within the next uh, few days. So it's uh, the stakes are very high. Thank you. Can you hold that up where you were holding it? Before yeah. I get a close this is, this? I'm afraid this is one I I put a plant on, so it got some dirt on it. This is the Canada-China Investment Treaty. They'll be speaking about this when my time comes to speak. I'll be speaking at around one o'clock. The organizers say, and I'll focus on this piece and. Uh, I hope we can get uh, Christy Clark, as Premier, to step up and go to court to stop Stephen Harper from ratifying this without the express permission of the British Columbia government. Elizabeth, the government argues that we need a second market, and that's what the Asian and the Ember <coughs> represents. Is that, is that a genuine argument? We have case? lots of markets, and one of the markets we ought to be dealing with is Eastern Canada, where in the rest of Canada, 55% of the oil we use as a country is imported. So there are other markets, and if we're going to look at China, we need to look at other ways to deal with that. Putting super tankers on our coastline is not an option. Yeah, the domestic market is never counted as the other market. It's just no. the Americans consider it's, the, it's always been a north-south market flowing from Canada down to the U.S. Now they want to put the bitumen on tankers heading to China. It's inherently an unsafe proposition. We won't stand for it. We need to be phasing out our dependency on fossil fuels, not ramping it up and finding uh, new places to ship dangerous fuel. What does the opposition in the House say about FIPA? Uh, unfortunately, I've been the only member of Parliament who's been pursuing this matter, so uh, I will continue to push it as hard as I can. Thanks a lot. Thank you. <laughs> in terms of whether the pipeline is actually good economically, it's not going to create many jobs. Okay. There's some short-term ones in terms of pipeline yeah. construction, but not many jobs uh, create, and then it potentially endangers lots of jobs along the coast if there's a spill. This is a historic day. Yeah.
up, everybody?
No tankers, no pipeline. And they'll have to double the width of the channel. That's the only way to make it safe. Double the width and double the depth, which is which means essentially increasing the channel by four times. that's going to come into Canada big time if it's allowed to buy Nexon. And that's what they're doing right now in Tibet. So I've got all kinds of interest. The destruction of my own country and the destruction of my husband's country. All by the same state organization that Chairman Harper, having destroyed our democracy here, nobody's speaking up, nothing, there's no debate in Parliament, the public doesn't know. <laughs>